Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Light Tracer Render. We have looked at this before in the past, but they do have a new version that you can try, of course, for free as a standalone version, or you can actually open it up in the web. Now, they have been very gracious in supporting the channel, and that's why I'm doing this video. But I'm going to give you my unbiased opinion, and right off the bat, I can tell you that there's been a lot of improvements on this render engine. It works really well, and there's some really cool things like a label system that works pretty easily, and it, it only works in the standalone version, but I do have all of the project files available on my Gumroad. The link will again be down below, along with links to other tutorial videos that have to do with Light Tracer Render and this particular perfume bottle. But you can see here that I have the Light Tracer product render scene here that you can see the splash and the actual object here. So you can upload this into the standalone version and take a look. So really quick, I just wanna show you what it's going to look like when it's all done, and this is what it looks like. Now, inside of this, it's pretty familiar if you're used to using other render engines. You have some materials over here that are some presets, which they actually have quite a bit, and they have built-in stuff as well as downloadable stuff. If you go up here, you can change things around. You can edit your lighting over here on the left. And then also down here, you could see that we have right here, it says backplate at the very bottom. You can see here that you can change this to a gradient. And that's why I have this in the background. Now you can use any of these other things here. You can use an image back there. You can actually create a 3D object for the ground. But I thought that this made a very nice flat background to show our product. And I also have some bottles here where I'm gonna show you how the different labels can be applied to these different things using their label system, which is pretty awesome. And again, that's only in the standalone version. You won't be able to use the web version to do this particular thing. So I've just opened up a new version and you can see here that it shows you, here's you know the basic scene. It kind of gives you some information about how to you know get started and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna grab one at a time here. I'm gonna drag the perfume bottle in here. And you'll see here that it says a couple things, convert all materials to two-sided, da 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 da. We're gonna replace here, because if you just add, it's gonna you know, be inside of this object here. So we're gonna press replace. You can see that there's our bottle with no materials. And I'm just going to take the splash and the spray, and I'm gonna add this time as I load these into the scene. And some of these, based on the size, it will take a little bit longer. So up here, you're gonna see that we have all of our things inside of this here. We have tube and then tube, which for some reason there's like some duplicates. So um, I might've just messed up on the export. So let's delete that there. And we have a couple things here, the bottle, and then this is the bottle and the liquid. So I'm gonna rename these. If I right click, rename, we're gonna change this to perfume liquid. And then the bottle here, we're just gonna remove this zero two. And there we go. So let's go over here to the properties. And for right now, we're just going to break this group apart just to make it a little bit easier for me to select some things. And we're gonna click on the bottle here. And if we go over to the library and we go here and we go to built-in, you'll see that there's all this stuff here and you can see that there's some glass. So we're just gonna use this here that says optical glass, left click and drag right onto our object there. Now, it's really awesome is the way that the labels are applied here. So let's turn off all of this stuff here. Let's keep the bottle, but turn off everything else. And when we go right here, we can open this up and we can actually create a floor here. So if I go here and model stands, I can put a square floor, which it starts off just automatically. If we click on the scene floor here and we go to the properties, it's basically just a shadow catcher, which is really nice because if we go down here to the bottom, we can change this to a gradient, just like that, and look how nice that is. You have the shadow on the bottom, and then you have the very nice gradient effect that makes it very easy to render this out and change the background as you like. So right here, you can see that there's object labels. And if we have this selected here, this front end is a little bit more flat. So I'm just gonna choose this flat label, like this. And here we have the label, which is really cool because we can actually move it around and it automatically projects. Now with the project file that I have on my Gumroad, you're gonna have all of these labels that you can use to practice. And we're just gonna use this one right here that says perfume label. And right here underneath the properties, you can see that there's this right here that says opacity. So we're gonna click that and we're going to choose the perfume label. 
you can see it kind of rotated a little bit funky. And what you can do is if you go to the manipulation widget here, you can click here to project it to the surface, which is really awesome. So let's then rotate this a little bit because it's not quite the right orientation. So we'll rotate it around this way. And we're going to scale this. And then I actually like this a little bit more scaled up in this direction. And we'll pull it in a little bit this way. And we can sort of like change how that looks. And you can see there that I translated a little bit too far in the opposite way. So it's projecting onto the back there. So let's move it this way. And there we have it right on the front, like that. Now, sometimes you might notice that the, the way that this is sticking might be a little bit odd. So make sure that you rotate it and change the max depth projection to match what it is that you're trying to do with whatever it is the object is, because sometimes that will fix some projection issues onto this thing. This is not that much different than what you experience inside of Blender or other programs. These are just easier to manipulate so that you can actually get this set where you want. Now, what I did was I went up here to the properties and I made this a metal. I moved the roughness to about there and I made it a gold color or something like this. And with proper lighting and all that kind of stuff, you'll be able to get a really nice look to this. And you're more than welcome to add some roughness maps and everything like that if you'd like. Now I've just grouped all this stuff together here. I'm just going to turn that off because I'm going to show you what this looks like with some other objects in the scene. So if I take the bottles that I have here and I add them into the scene, you can see that they are a little bit sunken into the floor. So we can just move that group a bit like this and very easily we can select these objects here and throw a couple of materials on them just to get an idea about what we're looking at. But just to show you how these other label systems work, if I go here and I select this object here and I add a label and I'm just going to use the flat label again for this one because it's pretty flat. It's a little bit cylindrical down here, but let's try it with the flat one. We can change it. You can see here label geometry. You can change it here. And we can also change if we choose spherical or cylindrical, you can change the curvature, which is pretty awesome because it makes it a lot easier to do this sort of stuff. So if we go to the properties and we select a new map, and for this one, we're going to pick the shaving cream. We can then go and change this to a white color like this. And we're actually going to turn off the uh, physical so that we don't have to worry about the uh, depth of field here it changes to pinhole so it's easier to see things. And you can see that we have a nicely projected label right on the front. Really easy. You don't have to deal with all the stuff inside of Blender or other programs where you have to subdivide a surface mesh and like then use a projection modifier. It's already all built in, which is really amazing. I think that this is a really fantastic tool and it makes product rendering much, much easier. So let's add another label here and we're going to select this right here. Let's actually select this one because I'll show you again what happens. So if I go to the cylindrical one and I'm like, oh, whoops, I went to the wrong one. You can go here stick to surface and select a different one. And you can see there it projected automatically to this one right here. And you can see that it automatically puts everything into proportion. We don't have to change the size of it to match it. It just automatically reads the size of your map and projects it on there very, very easily. Once you're ready and you have all of your settings here and you have this set to render and you have your quality preset here to quality, once this green line at the top finishes your render, you can go up here and export your image to a PNG or whatever it is that you're rendering out, and you can save your scene just like that. Thanks so much again to Light Tracer Render for supporting the channel. Thank you so much to my patrons for your ongoing support. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link down below in the video description, and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.